All right, we'll go to the next question. And uh, there's no more questions for today. I've got all 20 ready to go. Number seven is, how should mental health issues affect dating for Christians, both one's own issues and a spouse candidate's potential issues, like someone who you think you might want to marry? Overall, what things should be considered when choosing to start dating? You know what I look at is I look at the book of Proverbs as instructions of the kind of person you want to be and the kind of person you want to marry. I think Proverbs is really good on this because Proverbs helps you see whether that person is wise or not. And you, you don't often know people when you're first trying to date them. You know the face they put up, even when they don't, I don't know if they're trying or not, but even when they, when they, uh, when they don't admit it, they're sometimes putting up these fake versions of themselves that come down over time, which is why you don't want to rush into relationships, generally speaking. Not like it's, some of you have rushed into relationships and you're very blessed. Good for you. I'm just saying it's not a good rule to put up for everybody. Just pick someone and go for it. Um, uh, that works for some people. And for others, you know, you get to know them and you find out that uh, there's major issues. How do mental health issues factor in? I think mental health issues factor in when they when they become things where a person cannot handle basic human responsibilities, like raising a child. Are your mental health issues going to affect your ability to raise a child? Then you may not want to marry that person. Um, are those mental health issues uh, going to affect their ability to to work or to keep a home or you know to interact in a healthy long term relationship? Um, so it's really not like are you diagnosed with this mental illness, then I won't be with you. It's rather, how does that mental illness affect you in the day-to-day -day life? So I don't look at the diagnosis. I look at the behavior that, that at least is how I would approach it for you to consider. Maybe there's another way to look at it, but the book of Proverbs, man, um, let me give you an example. Um, this is Proverbs 24, 24. I think this is pretty relevant. Ladies, listen up. <laughs> Make no friendship with a man given to anger, nor go to a wrathful man, lest you learn his ways and entangle yourself in a snare. Don't marry angry people. I mean, if you know, if you know a person, and you're like, oh, they're this and that and this and that, but boy, they sure have a crazy temper, but they would never, it would never turn on me. I'm the, I'm the special, you know, rose in the garden and, and they would never have that attitude towards me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Uh, it will happen if, if I shouldn't make friendship where I'm con not just casual friendship, but like friendship, we walk together as friends. If I shouldn't do this with someone who's given to anger, how much more should I not marry that person? How about a lazy person? Scripture warns against laziness. Don't marry a lazy person. Really what we do when we're very young is we think, well, they're cool and pretty and they're attractive and I like them. Um, those things are less important the longer you're married. <laughs> and so I think that we should look at godly character as, as probably the chief issues to consider when considering marriage. I hope that some of that will give you some thoughts and some things to consider some, uh, some help.